When you or your loved one is injured in a car or slip and fall accident, one of the most important decisions you're going to make is the lawyer that you hire. At Alam Law, we take pride in the fact that every person who calls for a free consultation speaks to one of our personal lawyers, not just a legal assistant or agent. Call Alam Law at 416-625-2636 for a free consultation. And remember, you do not pay anything unless I win your case. Hi viewers, it's the time to tag you another episode of Tag Time. Today I have with me a very very honorable guest. Her name is Amira Hapshi. Welcome to our show. Thank you very much. Amira, um, first I would like people to know your background. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to join you today. Uh, as a matter of fact, originally I am a Coptic Christian uh, Egyptian. Um, I came to Canada six years ago uh, and um, I had to, you know, take my um, baby steps and learn about all the different parties. And then I joined the Conserv Conservative Party of Canada because it's reflecting my views and uh, my beliefs. Uh, so I started my baby steps, uh, you know, being an activist through the community. Uh, I, ha I helped out in the, um, uh, through our church uh, in the food bank. And this is how I started to explore and um, get to uh, be involved in the community services. And I found a passion uh, through working and giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, um, part of uh, being Christian, our beliefs and um, part of our ed education and values was to give service to the community. So uh, I found uh, that uh, we could do that here in various uh, opportunities. And um, one of which is being a voice for women and for um, visible minorities as an activist in the in the uh, conservative party so what was your professional background okay i graduated i graduated from uh, politics and uh, international trade and foreign trade but i had started a family in young age so i wasn't uh, had the opportunity to um, uh, you know um, develop my passion but when we came here, my kids are grown up now, and uh, I started that this is a, something that, you know, like a dream come true to me, again, to um, um, refresh uh, my, um, my, <laughs> my dream and uh, become again active in the political, uh, political life. So how would you express the difficulties you can see the different communities and minorities are having? As a matter of fact, through um, my marriage life, uh, we moved a lot, me and my husband, uh, because we lived in Dubai as well before. So I met different nationalities. I was able to mingle with different societies, different nationalities, and I was exposed to women from different uh, backgrounds and different beliefs. And actually, to adapt in a community that you haven't been born and raised is a challenge in itself. So uh, I took all those experiences and I started to um, try to help out women in the same situations. And actually in our communities and societies, we weren't able to be noticed. You know, women are not as strong and are not privileged as they are here in Canada, which is, of course, an opportunity for, for the women to be, to have a voice, mm -hmm. to speak up. So uh, do you think the community who is living from your background in here in Canada, having the same difficulty uh, with women in here also? Of course not. There are lots of challenges for women over, uh, over there in the Middle East. And you know, speaking the language and living there, it will help uh, the, the community to understand, to, the community of Canada to understand the, 
the challenges and the difficulties that women over there are facing nowadays. But the community, who, Middle Eastern community who is here, what is your experience meeting with them? Well, actually, one of the main challenges that I can see and feel the language. There is a, some of the migrants that came here do not speak English, right? And that's a challenge in itself to mingle with the society, to mingle with the community, not only in the Coptic community, because um, there are standard um, um, rules for, for you to come here, but um, even, even for the refugees, even for the new immigrants, there are lots of challenges. Uh, you know, uh, trying to find a job would be a challenge. Uh, so in, in order for you to settle down, you need a few years to start um, being uh, able to, you know, com mingle with the community. You very rightly said that immigration itself has huge challenges. Yes. On the top of it, being a woman is very difficult. Mm -hmm. What are your findings that how you can um, you can uh, impact on those challenges well um, first we have to define the challenges as we mentioned and then we try to educate educate even the um, younger generations that coming because you know when you come in a new country you have lots of challenges to survive right so after that you start being comfortable you need to give back to your community it's way it's a win-win situation you have to work and you have to earn back it's not it's not one way it's you give to the community something and you get something in return you cannot expect to be passive we have to be uh, progress in the community we cannot just stand still and we have to be vocal we need to speak up about the challenges that facing us and the challenges that face our kids mm -hmm. our children have lots of challenges as well in in uh, schools in the community surrounding uh, so as a parent we need to educate ourselves first and then we need to deliver to our children it's not just talking we need to also be able to find the channel channels the correct channels to deliver so being a woman uh, how do you see the gender discrimination within your community um, well usually well the the community i lived in before i joined i came to canada was a male male dominant society right and I lived, as I mentioned, I lived in Dubai. Uh, I had the support. I, well, I lived differently a little bit because my dad uh, had two girls uh, and um, he did not treat me or my sister as, um, as the community does with their girls. You know, we, we would have our voice. He would come and talk to us in his business. He was a very successful businessman. And in young age, he would come and talk to us uh, and give us problems that he needs solution for in order to develop our skills. And also my husband did the same. He was very supportive to me. That's why I wasn't shy woman or uh, I will be, you know, dealt with as a second secondary. No, I was always in the pri uh, primary line. Uh, that helped me because I had my own business. I was an entrepreneur when I was 29 years old. And I, w I had a very successful business in Dubai. I managed to be one of the top five advertising companies over there wow. so yeah so uh, this is where I come from you have to have uh, the family support and uh, also the education and uh, you would face the challenges it wasn't easy trust me it wasn't easy to live in a male dominant society and to be successful to that point so how far do you think that uh, the men of the house are also important and what role do they play in bringing up all the family structure? As a matter of fact, it's when it's uh, it, uh, the parenting in itself, it, the mother and the, the father has to have a, um, a, like a, um, how can you say, agreement, special agreement between them. 
of how they want to develop their young, the offspring or their youngers mm -hmm. in order to follow the footsteps. If you have a role model in front of you and a successful family, the, the kids will follow straight. It's not just talking. You have to have, <laughs> you know, you have to show them because this, the picture will stay in their head. Uh, you know, I, my late dad, I always remember him, how hard, how uh, hard he worked and how he developed us in a small things. And this is this was built in, in us. Right. So mm -hmm. and the determination of my mom. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So uh, how do you feel that uh, you are a mom and you are doing so much activism? So what are your challenges and what is your goal? Actually, uh, I, my goal is to, uh, uh, to um, I want to protect the, the youngers, the coming generation from the evil. The evil is surrounding us very bad, okay? And I don't want the, the kids to uh, blame us later down the road. We need to focus. We need to focus and uh, remember the reason why we came here. We came here to live in a safe country. You can see everywhere around us in the world there there is no rest. Nobody is at peace, right? But we are very privileged living here in Canada. Uh, so we want to keep it that way. We want to keep it safe, right, for our children and the coming generations. So uh, this is something really uh, very important for me. And this is a very big goal. And I hope that... Uh, uh, I can um, manage to be even a small, uh, small wing in, in a huge plan. I thank you very much, Amira, for sharing your views with us. Thank you very much. Viewers, Canada is no doubt one of the best countries of the world, which is not only very big hearted, but also prosperous for those who give their hand and are ready to take their hands. So life is to share and prosperous together. We all want to see our generations happy and living in harmony with each other. For that matter, we have to learn to communicate to each other. With these words, thank you very much for watching.